All right, today I have the Fantex Evolve Shift 2 with you. This is the second iteration. The first one I did not build in, but essentially I'm showing you what kind of obstacles you have to overcome and any other issues that you might have and what it's like building inside this case. So let's get to it. All right, so the Evolve Shift 2 is a mini ITX case. As you can probably tell, it's a very narrow case. It's vertical. It's a very different form factor. So there are definitely going to be some differences in your typical PC building. So to access and get the panels off and get this ready for building, everything starts with right here on the lid or the hood. Right here, you just press down and it pops right up. All right, so hopefully these screws are in focus because for each panel there is on this case, it all is unscrewed right here at the top. There's two screws for each panel right up at the top. And this is really nice. It's all centered in one area and it makes it very easy to distinguish where all the panels come together and it does not make it confusing whatsoever. And these should be capped. So you just lift up and they pop right off. Same thing for this side as well. That just pops right off and just slides off. And I believe either tempered glass side panel can be used on either side because they are identical in shape and mounting. I hope this is in focus and that you guys can see this, but there's another screw over here and another one over here, and this pops off in the same way. There is a dust filter built in and integrated to the sides of this front panel. I guess if that is considered the front panel, I'm not sure. And for the back of the case, the first thing we wanna do is unscrew the back over here. Also wanna make note, there is a dust filter integrated into the hood or the top of the case. And then once this back panel is fully unscrewed, lower the hood, and you should be able to pop that right off. Now looking at the bottom of the case, right over here where the feet are, as you can tell there's these rubber feet on the bottom here. There is also mounting for a fan right at the bottom of the case here. So you should just be able to lift this up and pop this off so we can install our bottom mounted fan. All right, and included with this case, we have our accessory box that's located inside of the case. This really nice manual that pretty much lays out everything you need for building inside of the case. And then also this magnetic cable hider of some sorts, which I'll show to you guys later on in the video, of course. So we're gonna go through and look at this accessory box here. What I absolutely love is that it included this beautiful tray for organizing all your different mounting hardware. I absolutely love this. I love seeing this and I could use a hundred of these things, honestly. And then you get some zip ties and some foam insulators as well. And I'm not exactly sure what they're used for just yet, but I will let you know if I do find out. All right, right now we're looking at the bottom of the case. I'm going to install the fan mounted on the bottom first. Now this case does come with a 140 millimeter fan already pre-installed, which is really nice. I believe this is their DRGB fan. And I also have some of their DRGB fans right here. However, this is the 120 millimeter fan. I wish I did have the 140 over here, but I'm just gonna use the 120 for the sake of the video. But I would recommend getting 140 as I believe this is the primary intake fan for this case. And you wanna get as much air getting shoved into the case as possible. And I would recommend that with a 140. So anyways, I'm gonna use this 120 for right now and the cables will be routed out over here, right where these cables are getting routed, right over here. So these are already pre-routed inside the case so it kind of gives you an idea where your cables are gonna go because this is not a traditional case. Cable routing is definitely going to be an art or a science in this case. So we have this little cable cut out and that's where the fan wire will lead to over here and then also up over here where we have this Velcro strap and feed in over to the motherboard. We're gonna get that installed and move on to the next thing. All right, I have the fan installed here, and then we have the cables routed right through this little hole right over here. And just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, it is a little tricky to get these two screws screwed in without a shorter screwdriver. Uh, if you have a 140 millimeter fan though, the holes come out over here and it's a little bit easier to have some access to that. However, for the other side over here, there's plenty of clearance. So I just wanted to point that out. I'm going to install the PSU now. And something that I noticed right over here, I put these little rubber grommet-like things. This actually came with the Fantex fan that I just installed. This came with it, and I just put these little rubber grommets here for the PSU to rest on because there's no rubber mounts over here. So I'm wondering how it's going to isolate the vibration from the PSU. So 
I don't know if that's already thought out, but I would have liked to have seen some rubber padding over here just for the PSU to rest on. Even though it gets mounted this way, I would still have liked to have seen that. So the PSU is now installed. I have the fan face towards the other way since this will be right up against the glass. And the air can come through the bottom here and get fed into the PSU and expel out this way. But I just want to make enough room just so the CPU cooler can get mounted over here, which will be a 120 millimeter radiator and fan. And that will get mounted up over here underneath and tubes coming up over here where there's this little notch and cutout in this little mid plate. All right, so I installed the cooler and the motherboard as one. I attached it all as one unit and in the manual it says to install the CPU cooler first and then the motherboard. So for cooling options, I believe you might be able to fit an air cooled option. Now, as you can see, I screwed in the radiator over here. We have the fan blowing out of the case like so. And for the tubes over here, it's a little tight here. Now there is a cutout, a little notch over here in this mid plate. And the only way I could get these tubes to somewhat not kink was to mount the tubes coming out of the block over here facing towards the top of the motherboard over here where the EPS connector is over there. These do have a little bit of swivel action. However, it's just it's just a little tight. It's a little tight. So find yourself a cooler that is pretty flexible. So yeah, now let's move on to installing the GPU. All right, so to install the GPU, we first have to remove the bracket that holds the GPU. And there is a screw right over here, as you can see that I'm pointing out with the screwdriver that is underneath the motherboard over here right by the RAM slots. Now this is on a track, so you can slide the entire bracket that holds the GPU. And then on the other side of the case over here, there's two screws over here. So you remove these two screws and that other screw from before, you screw in your GPU into the bracket and then you screw everything back into place. And then you plug in the PCIe riser cable into the motherboard. All right, so I have the GPU installed into its bracket here, and I'm just gonna leave the GPU out of the case for right now. The reason being is I want to get the cables pre-wired and plugged in since this is pretty much the last part of the build. The only other thing to do is install my SSD that I have. I have another SSD, which gets installed into this caddy right here. And the caddy just slides up and pops out on these little notches right here. And there's another mount up top over here in case that one works better for you. Whichever works best, you choose, and it can hold up to two SSDs on the same tray, and there's only one tray that comes with the case, so there's not a second. So I have here most of the cable management done. So I can't go over every single cable. But anyways, I can give you guys some insight and some obstacles that I encountered and how I overcame those things. So a lot of the cables can run down over here which is pretty nice. So there's two grommets over here and there's a lot of interaction over here. Uh, there's also a cable hider, like I mentioned earlier, that gets put over here. So it should do a good job at hiding these cables. Something I'd like to address is that in an ITX or a small form factor PC, having cables hit the fan is one of the biggest things to try and avoid. Because you're working in such a tight space, more often than not, you're most likely gonna have to think of a way creatively to get cables off of a fan. However, the cable management in this case is very well thought out. There's just all sorts of areas and cutouts almost in every panel and all four corners. And it really allows you to have a lot of flexibility when deciding where to put your cables. So a couple of options they give you in the manual are just pointers. Some of those pointers didn't work for me because the cables on this SFX PSU weren't long enough to actually route it the way they were mentioning in the manual itself. So if you look over here, you can see we have this tentacle of cables coming off the side here. This is going to the EPS or the CPU power connectors. And also there is no fan splitter. Don't fret, I would just always recommend having at least one or two fan splitters when building an ITX case anyway, since there's usually only at least two or three headers on an ITX motherboard. And before I button everything down, I want to make sure that I have the GPU installed, so I'm going to do that next. To get your GPU installed, I had this already installed into the bracket, of course, and then you lay it in like so. And then I would screw in these two top screws first and then screw in the one that goes on the other side of the mid sidewall over here. And also something to make sure of is to have your cables at the bottom of the case 
to have them pretty flat if you can help it. This way, the GPU can sit mostly flush against this the sidewall or at least straight enough so it's not getting in the way of these cables and they're pushing on each other. So I'm trying to maximize the airflow here by getting these cables all tidied up together so we can have air coming in through the bottom of the case. But once the GPU is in and you have your cables buttoned down and tidied up, that's essentially it. And this is the final result. So building in this case was not as hard as I thought it would be. It's definitely challenging, and I have a lot of experience in building in different cases here, but the cable management and the organization of parts and the layout is just very well thought out. There's a lot of engineering that goes into this case, and I can see it. Everything is pretty much made from the ground up because I don't know another case that is like this or is based off of a similar platform. The airflow and everything, I am not testing here. Uh, I just don't have the time or the tools to test this properly. I'm going to leave that up to people like Gamers Nexus and the like to test thermals. However, there is definitely more of a emphasis on airflow in this case, I believe. The only things I recommend is getting a couple of fan splitters for your multiple fans. Get a 140 millimeter fan for the bottom of the case so you have as much airflow going down from the bottom. This can fit a SFX L power supply, but I believe that will interfere with the cooling tubes from the AIO if you decide to get an AIO. And with that being said, also get some extensions on your cables for the EPS connector and possibly the VGA or the GPU connector. Uh, it also depends on the power supply as well. Uh, some power supply manufacturers have different lengths to the cables they make. So those are just some of the things to consider and look into when doing your research for this. And also make sure you're getting a fairly flexible uh, CPU cooler here where the tubes over here are lined and stacked on top of each other like this, where it'd be much easier to have a water block with the tubes laying horizontally instead of vertically. The price is around $100 to $110. I think this definitely warrants that. If I have any criticisms for this case, I just wish that the blacked out portions on the window were a little bit bigger for the bottom portion because it is very hard to organize and make your cables look neat around in this area, no matter what you do, um, unless you were an absolute craftsman and master of cable management, it's gonna be very hard to make this look neat. Even though you can put some cables on the side over here and here within these panels, there's just no avoiding getting these cables out of the way. Anyways, I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna show you guys some B-roll so you can truly appreciate this build.